Yeah, Country yeah. star Jason Aldean has been under fire this week from some critics after users on social media slammed his new music video for the song that you just heard, Try That in a Small Town, saying that it supports lynching. Well, the song was released on May 19th, but the controversy surrounding it arose on July 14th when the video was released. Critics point out the music video was filmed at Maury County Courthouse in Columbia, Tennessee, the site of a 1927 lynching and 1946 Columbia race riot. Aldine responded to the claims on Twitter, saying in part, I have been accused of releasing a pro-lynching song and was subject to the comparison that I was not too pleased with, the nationwide BLM protest. These references are not only meritless, but they are also dangerous. There is not a single lyric in the song that references race or points to it, and there isn't a single video clip that isn't real news footage. Do you think Jason Aldine looked up what happened at that courthouse 100 years um, ago? Not likely. I don't think there was any symbolism intended there. Okay, joining us now in support of Jason Aldean is legendary musician Pat Boone. Pat, good morning. Thank you so much for your time, sir. <laughs> that legendary usually translates to old. <laughs> in my case, it's appropriate. Thank you. I'm glad to be with you. Tell us about, I mean, your, de your career spans, I don't know how many, six, seven decades? Yes, 70 years. So when you... Five was my first million seller. Wow. And when you see something like this that happened to Jason Aldean, obviously it, 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 it rattled you enough to make you speak out. It sure does. You know, Jason, I'm comparing him to Paul Revere. If anybody knows still our American history, when, the, uh, when the, we were being invaded and taken over completely by a foreign government in Great Britain, uh, this guy, Paul Revere, Ran, rode his horse across the country yelling, the British are coming, the British are coming, get ready, get armed, get ready. And that's what's happening now. He is a Paul Revere in our time because we are already invaded by fentanyl, by drugs. Over, We've had an invasion across our non-existent border of, what, 8 million people now that we don't know who they are, where they came from. And, and what they're doing now, we, we're li living in our streets and tents. Our nation has been invited, I mean invaded, literally invaded. And we don't, we don't have lost track of the fact that our American values were born in small towns. Small town America was where our liberties were born and created. And, the, uh, and the, our representatives came from smaller towns uh, across America and created the uh, Declaration of Independence and our Constitution, which made us who we are. Now it's being corrupted and forgotten and not even taught in school. And the Bible on which our nation and our liberties are founded is, is in, in danger of being called hate speech because it gets in the way of these liberal and uh, progressive and actually, in some cases, communistic, socialistic, philosophies that are being forced upon us. We've got to defend ourselves, and it begins where it began, in small-town America. It sounds to me, Pat, like you're under the impression uh, that uh, our country is being destroyed from within. It is definitely, it's riddled, it's, it's, it's got trichinosis. <laughs> I hadn't said, thought of that before, but it's spiritual trichinosis. Worms have invested our and, and invaded our flesh, and it's sapping us of our strength and our resolve and our dedication. We're being intimidated by false ideology, and our kids don't even, they're not being taught where we came from in our schools anymore. And in fact, if, it, if history of America is taught, so many want it to, to make it seem that we were a racist slave nation, that we were built on slavery, which was not the case. Slavery was all over the world at that time, and yes, it affected us, but we, what we eventually legislated and voted our way out of it. Thank God for Abraham Lincoln, and some people are tearing down even his statues and, and taking his name off schools. But what has happened to us? We're losing our way. Well, Pat, I would like to ask you, would you please compare and contrast the America we live in today with the America that you grew up in? Well, it was small town America. I grew up out in, it wasn't even Nashville yet where I grew up. It was outside Davidson County. And I grew up on a farm 
uh, on, out on Granny White Pike, and I actually, when I was in high school, already dating the, the girl I would marry, uh, I would milk the family cow and get on my bike and ride to school. It was a Christian high school, but that's the, the America I grew up in. I call my parents really the the forerunners of the two-party system. Daddy was a Republican, Mama a Democrat. Mama would invite all the neighbor, not neighbors, but strays and people who needed help to the house and feed them and, and welcome them. Daddy was saying, Margaret, if we keep doing this, I'm going to have to get some help myself. We've got four kids, and we've got to take care of our own needs and pay our taxes. And and it was like the Republican and Democrat parties, but they got along because they understood and they communicated and they loved each other. And now we are, I don't know whether we're two parties or three or four parties, it's hard to say. We used to be two sexes, and now we're three or four or five sexes. Uh, all of our definitions of who we are are being changed from the simple, basic, biblical ways that we grew to be America in the first place. The, yeah, the Judeo-Christian values, absolutely. Yes. yes. Um, have you had a chance to speak with Jason Aldean about this? I haven't, but I'm sure by now that he uh, he knows he's got an ally in me. <laughs> and, and even though people are calling it racist and even promoting violence, and I'm sorry, Cheryl Crow has had that view because I love her and she's wonderful. But uh, she, too, I think, is from small town America. And I I, I, I told uh, Jesse Waters that I'm living in a small town uh, in California called Beverly Hills. It's not as big as people may think. And in this small town, I've had to have guns in my house to defend myself and my four daughters and my wife. And Jason talked about and I'm going to compare with him this um, a Colt 44. His, his grandfather gave him. My grandfather, J.C. Pritchard, gave me this. I only fired it once here in the house. I was just uh, had a, I wanted to see how if it still worked, and it sure does. And I dropped a 22 uh, cartridge into the barrel, just a 22 bullet, and pointed it to the open screen door and shot a hole in it. <laughs> And my wife, uh, you know, insisted I put it away, and and I haven't ever used it since. However, I do have um, I have a license, and I have a uh, a very potent weapon. If if I have to face in Beverly Hills, our small town, as people up the street from me, just four or five doors have, uh, not not long ago, a woman named Josephine Rossigno, a neighbor Italian woman. She, uh, her, her, the home next to her was invaded by three, uh, you know, uh, hooded brigands, and uh, and they, somebody saw them. Police came, caught two of them. One came down the alley, next to our house here, and uh, the police were afraid that it might be on our property. So they made Shirley and me leave, uh, and get in the car, and our housekeeper go across to the park until they had searched our property. And, uh, and did not find him. But meanwhile, I called Josephine uh, just four doors up the street and um, asked her if she was okay. And she said, yes, I'm fine. I'm sitting here in the kitchen with a gun I have a license for in my lap, hoping this guy will come back in the door. Mm. And she wanted to introduce him to some real small town uh, freedom. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like it. Um, tell us, uh, Pat, tell us about this song. You've got a song of your own called Grits. Yes, thank you for that. And you know, I might call it uh, grit as well. I'm there. Yeah, that's part of the video. It's the old country staple that I love, and it came to me in a dream. It's too long a story, but I dreamed it, and there I am on a Quaker Oats uh, canister, and we promote that country food that now is sweeping the nation. Big hotels and restaurants now are serving shrimp and grits, and it's considered a real delicacy now. But it's just the old country food that we grew up eating out in, in small town America. So I'm promoting grit and grit. We need old fashioned American grit to defend our own liberties and our values. And maybe grits in the morning will help. <laughs> yeah, grits. I bet you a lot of our viewers have never even had grits, don't know what they are. My parents are both from the South. Grits are great. Oh man, it, it, well, it's, it's, you compare it to cream of wheat or mashed potatoes, but it's little bits of corn. And yes, I'm corny. 
corny, <laughs> not horny, corny. Right. And uh, and and it, it's just a tried and true country staple that people are still discovering. But many of us, by the millions, have been eating grits for years. And it's just it's the song. It just strikes a. Uh, a, a very funny welcome chord with people. Again, it's old fashioned value, yeah. old fashioned value. And right. that's what we've got to reclaim in this nation and, on an individual basis and a small town basis. And you mentioned in your small town of Beverly Hills. Pat, how long have you been living in Beverly Hills? Uh, since 1960. That's what, uh, that's 68 years, I guess. Okay. Since 60. Now, let me ask, I, let me ask you a question. Do you, let me take you back many, many years. You had a next door neighbor who was also a musician named Ozzy yep. Osbourne. Yep. He moved in and he, he lived there three years and we got to be friends. And I had recorded his songs in a heavy metal album. I did of heavy metal classics with big band jazz arrangements, which also was a big hit like Al Dean's is right now. And, uh, and here's Ozzy Osbourne of Crazy Train fame, <laughs> moved in next door. And as he, I, I went out to get the mail one morning, I hadn't seen him or met him yet, but here he comes shuffling on the sidewalk to get in a big Escalade. Oh, hello, Pat, hey, hey, hey it's nice to meet you. He said, uh, I gotta go to AA meeting, but when I get back, we'll have some tea, okay? <laughs> and uh, and we did, we got to be friends. and. And uh, when he his TV show started, you know, the, the Osbournes, mm -hmm. I took it to see what it was all about. And uh, there I was singing his song as the theme, opening theme song, Crazy, Hey, That's How It Goes, uh -huh. singing his theme song on his show, Pat Boone, his neighbor, singing his song. Well, that's he became my neighbor. We became friends. Yes, there was a lot of noise from across the hedge. <laughs> and when he started the show... Uh, he moved up to the Truesdale Estates, mm -hmm. and I've been ha I've been happy about that because I probably would have been dragged into the show. <laughs> but instead, we remained good neighbors, and uh, and on his show, I remember one time in which uh, Sharon was over the sink doing dishes or something, and she said, "Oh, don't you miss Pat Boone? Oh, he was our best bank and bank neighbor we ever had." <laughs> You know, I got I got to tell you, Pat, um, during the three years that the Osbournes were your next door neighbors, my brother was their nanny. And no. he, yes. And he's met you and he, he he has always spoken so glowingly about you. But he told me he said one of the most surreal experiences he ever had was when he picked the kids up at school and he drove them back home and he pulled up in the driveway and you and Ozzy were standing out in the front yard having a conversation. Yes, yeah, and in his yard at times, and my yard yep. as well. And uh, oh, and he was hel helping. You know, I love those kids. Yep. In fact, I love Sharon and Ozzy, and and the kids. Uh, they were neighbors. We had far different upbringings. We had even far different beliefs. Although he had demonic symbols in his house, but wore a big cross on his chest yeah. as well. And so there was there was a, a conflict of a commingling of what we actually. But you know, he grew up in a rough, rough town, mm -hmm. and and he said that as he was growing up, it was either music or crime for him. Yeah. And he chose music, and uh, and he did it in his own spectacular way. And then I was delighted to sing his song "Crazy Train," which I found to be social valid social commentary about how hard it is for young people to coming up today to sort out what's real and what isn't and hypocrisy and contradiction and so on that they're faced with and and they and they go crazy on a on a on a crazy train yeah <laughs> and, and you know it was valid social commentary and yeah. a good song Pat Boone and Ozzy Osbourne the most unlikely of friends i think a lot and of neighbor. people neighbors neighbors yeah i've been to that house i've seen your house before you have a beautiful home it's a home, and we. It's, I never put in tennis courts because I said when we moved here, we were going to live by Tennessee standards. My, Shirley said, what do you mean? I said, we're going to go to church Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night at prayer meeting. We're going we're gonna to have family over. We're going we're gonna to be a family, Bible-centered uh, family, and that's what we were and still are. As a result, uh, we have uh, not only four beautiful daughters married to good guys, 
was given us 16 grandkids. Now we have 17 great grandkids. And I'm planning for my 90th birthday next June 1st. And we're going to have all of them, all of whoever, I don't know, however many people it's going to be, but we're planning for my 90th birthday. Meanwhile, I'm singing and eating grits. And I have a book. My latest book is on Amazon called If. And it's a revelation that, that I want everybody to read. It says up here, it's not religious. It's just life or death. Every promise of God to the Americans, to anybody, to all of us, every promise of God comes whether we want it or not. But it comes with an if. If we will receive him and his way, then he'll bless us <clears throat> inconceivably. But we're making the choices. Every one of us individually in our in our lives about eternity and in our, and the future of our country, we citizens individually must stand up, be counted, and live by biblical and and uh, and spiritual and real democratic principles. Or we're all going to need stuff like this in our homes. And I I've even got a little twenty two in the night table. <laughs> if anybody wants to bust in here, yeah. they're going to. They're going to meet me. All right. Careful pointing that thing down range there, Pat. All right. Hey, thank you so much. Have a great weekend. We sure appreciate your time. Thank you, too. God bless us all. Yes, sir.